Welcome back, Flames fans. It is the best Calgary Flames franchise mode you have ever seen on YouTube. I promise you. This is year number eight. We have four Stanley Cups in the books, man. Can we get number five? Can we do it? We're about to find out, man. It's been a great run of success for us. Uh, speaking of which, great run of success for Sidney Crosby. He's now retiring. So is Carey Price. Uh, legend Aaron Dell and Michael Hutchinson are also retiring. But Jack Campbell is also leaving the NHL. So, here we are. Now, looking at the draft, we do not have the first overall pick, obviously, because we'd be winning cups out here. But the Minnesota Wild do get a franchise potential player. So... That's good. Okay, that's going to give John Ram Jackson, our franchise player, some competition, and we'll see what he can do with it. Now, for our first pick, obviously we pick 31st, because that's, uh, that's where we should pick. Nan, there's not much. Actually, there isn't much other than this gem, which I figured, you know what, his potential seems a little low, but I figured since he's a gem, it might be higher, and it is top six forward, so that is huge for me. Instincts paying off on that one. Second pick of the draft, we try to go for that same kind of vibe, that same kind of logic. Because really, there was nothing, there was no clear cut, you know, clear shot of anything in my eyes anyway. So I, I figured, you know what, let's let's draft some gems, let's see what we got. I, I, I gave this Moses kid a little bit of, of thought. I saw he was a two-way D, I said, eh, maybe not, maybe not. We'll get the gem. And we'll see what happens with that. Now, unfortunately for us, the gem didn't super, you know, it didn't turn out great. But as you will see in the next couple of seconds, Moses, because I waited to see what he turned into, didn't really turn into much either. So, you know, that, that medium elite didn't come back to bite us. It wasn't a thing. However, speaking of medium elites, a little bit later down the draft... We come in, we're starting to get less and less information. We don't really know any of these kids, and I, I don't recognize them. I mean, it's a decade in. All of these motherfuckers are computer-generated at this point. We don't know squat about this clutterbuck gentleman, but he is a gem. That's all we know about him. I don't know how we know next to nothing about somebody, but we know he's a gem. But we'll, we'll, we'll try it out. We'll see what we can get out of this. We go all the way back to see what we got. And medium elite. Medium elite. This late in the draft, let's go. He's only a 57 overall, but by God, he just might turn into a really, really good player. And that pretty much is uh, the consequential picks for the draft. Nothing nothing much happened there. I got a starter goalie, and that's about it. Which, I mean, a starter is okay. We'll take it, but it's, not, uh, it's nothing too, too consequential, especially if he doesn't develop, because some goalies sometimes they just won't develop. So we'll see how that goes. But overall, good draft. I mean, whenever you can get a medium elite that late and a top six forward early that's most likely going to make it, that sign me up, man. Sign me up. That's the kind of draft that I want for my hockey teams. Now, we have some coaches expiring, some contracts and such, and I figured we've had such a great run of success that uh, there's no reason for me not to bring every single person that I can back to the organization. So... That's what we're going to do until we have a reason to make changes. We're not going to make changes. Here comes the re-sign phase where I check quickly to see how long we have with Rammer left. He is locked up for another three years. So our current, his current contract is coming to a close, but we still have a really, really good winning window before he wants, you know, $14 million, which we are going to give to him eventually because, I mean, he's he's John Ram Jackson. Okay, he, he is the Calgary Flames. He's going to be a lifelong flame who might not be along for this organization anymore is our Temi Panarin. He wanted over eight million dollars. Wasn't too comfortable with that. First thing I did, I went to flip to the goalie tab because I wanted to see if we had any big ticket goalies that we needed to re-sign Perrin and eh, you know what? He's not really gonna become that big of a deal. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to release him. We're going to bring in some fresh young blood to the Stockton Heat. Hopefully he can develop into a solid backup goalie because Pernan is just not going to be that guy. He'll top out at a 77 at the max. Now, we also have Ryan Nugent Hopkins, who I would love to bring back because of his versatility. Okay, he's a two-way guy, can kill penalties. He can play the wing or the center. I would love to bring him back. The only problem is he doesn't want to re-sign. But Mantha wants to re-sign, and we're about to get a deal on Mantha. He is 
he really wants to come play for the Calgary Flames. And you know what? At this price, for a 25 to 30 goal guy who's going to give you 50 points, I am down for it, man. I am down. He's going to be a really, really good top six asset for us. And, hey, a two-year contract at that low of a price, it can't really come back to bite us unless we do something else that's stupid, you know? So I'm going to go ahead and accept that. Evander Kane was there. He... Doesn't want to re-sign, but I look at his playoff stats and I go, man, if we're going to remain a very highly competitive team, you know, Stanley Cup contender, we have to bring this guy back. He always hooks us up with a really clutch playoff goal, but we're only going to bring it back for one year. We're going to overpay him a little teeny tiny bit because he doesn't really want to re-sign, but we're going to get Evander Kane back. It's going to be huge and he will come back to the Calgary Flames. Other than that... It's a lot of a lot of really small time stuff, a lot of random people. Now, Andreas Janssen, I do want to bring back because he didn't want a whole lot of money. That's uh, it, it comes right down to that. He didn't want a, a lot of money. We could bury him in the minors if need be. And I mean, he's an 81 overall who can come in and put a few points on the board. So we decided go ahead, offer him that low contract that he wants. He's going to re-sign with us. And the rest is basically just, you know, qualifying and signing low-level nerds that don't really have much of an impact on the team and that's pretty much what we're going to do except this guy I feel like this he might turn into something he's got decent potential want he's already 79 overall he's I like him so I just decided we're gonna we're gonna sign him for a little a little bit of term not too long and he's still at a number that I'm I'm somewhat comfortable with he's gonna be a player for the flames as far as soon as next season goes really and yeah everybody else just basically uh just randoms that aren't really that consequential but you got to re-sign them because you need players in the ahl and you need some prospects and you need a good system so that's what we did everybody comes back everybody loves daddy okay they're all coming back kane kang everybody everybody not a single person turned down my contract offer that's what i like to see and uh, those are the contracts we did ignore a, a few guys that didn't need re-signing and guys that didn't deserve new contracts but i mean it is what it is that's just how you got to run your organization under the salary cap now i got to make a decision it's ryan nugent hopkins or artemi Panarin. and at this point even though ryan nugent hopkins does not want to re-sign with us he is asking for less money than Panarin is and even though Panarin is a great contributor for us or has been for the very short amount of time that he's been here the thing is he's not that good for our chemistry like he puts up a lot of points but he he hurts our chemistry almost anywhere that we put him he doesn't particularly fit at five on five he fits on our penalty killing lines but that's not what we're using our Temi for you know what I'm saying so we're going to go ahead we're going to make the executive decision we're bringing back Ryan Nugent Hopkins and we're going to go ahead and let our Temperpreneur walk in free agency. Which, I mean, it is what it is. You know, it's the salary cap. You can't always get what you want. So, we're going to go to free agency after uh, heavily consider. I have enough cap space to re-sign Panarin. But that's going to hurt our depth. Okay, that's going to that's gonna mean we can't sign some of these guys. And you never know what can come up in free agency. You can have a good opportunity. So, I figured we're just going to go ahead. We're going to let him walk. And at that point, we're going to see if we can find somebody in free agency that fits more on our roster. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to simulate to Canada Day, July 1st, also known as John Tavares is a Leaf Day here in Canada. And here we are. We got a little bit of cap space. Obviously, this man is restricted as hell. There is no way this man's not restricted. I mean, he's a franchise potential I'm just looking for fit at this point, looking for guys that fit on my roster. Shockingly, there weren't a lot of people that fit, but I did find uh, Shillington wanted a very low amount of money for his level. You know, 82 overall players typically ask for a little bit more at this point in the sim than what he is. So I figured let's just sign him. He's a value deal. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do that and hopefully... That's going to lead to great things in the future. I'm still looking, and really, there's nobody that fits. I kind of got screwed over here. Nobody fits the scheme this well, but I saw Tom Wilson. I figure we have a physical team. Our scouts don't know if he'll fit, but since he's a physical player, I figure he might fit on the team, so we're going to sign him. Because Perry Kapanen, though, does fit, and that is huge for us. We want to sign Kasperi Kapanen. He's somewhat of a value deal, so we're going to sign him 
for a little bit longer just to make sure that we have him because I do like me some Gasperi Kapanen. He's going to turn in to a good contributor for the Calgary Flames. So those were the first signing attempts that we did and everybody comes back or everybody comes to the Calgary Flames. All three of them sign. That's huge. That leaves us. We still have a little bit of salary left, you know, a little bit of cap space left. Nothing too, too crazy. I mean, we could still take a swing at somebody big. But the thing is, like I said, is no one really fits our scheme that much that we want to commit that amount of capital to them. So we're just going to keep looking for fit. We find Gabe Landeskog, who actually fits pretty darn well. And I mean, it's Gabe Landeskog, right? He's a good two-way guy. We're going to we're gonna send him a little extra money his way. That was an overpayment, I'm not going to lie. But the thing is, he wanted a two-year term. And at this point in his career, term really matters. So we wanted to make sure that we got Gabe Landeskog. So we offered him a little extra mill. little Just a little extra milli to make sure that he signed with the organization. And you know what? Worked out. So I consider it a success. We go back into free agency with a little bit less cap space. But we find Vinny Trocek who is a really, really good fit and also somewhat of a value signing. So we're going to give him only one year. Same thing with the uh, Trojek that we did with Landy. We're going to give him only one year, but he wants terms. So we're going to overpay him a little bit. And that is free agency, man. That's that's how it works. If you want to get the term you want, you better be ready to pay up. Trocek comes back to us. So that is fantastic. We've made a couple of really quality additions so far to the roster. Here are some of the random nerds that I just qualified. And... They're signing. They're coming back to the Flames. We don't have a whole lot of cap space. We still have a little bit, though. We see this loophole kit. Restricted free agent still unsigned by the Detroit Red Wings. And we also see Yevgeny Svechnikov. We're going to offer him a little little team tan, a bit of a contract. But the thing is, we're going to offer him the amount of money that we can possibly just bury in Stockton. So that's not going to hurt our cap situation if we don't want it to. If we don't want them on the roster, and I say them because we're about to do the same thing with Merkley, if we don't want these guys on the roster, we send them to Stockton, they don't really hurt our cap because you could bury that much money in the American Hockey League. So we're going to keep on motoring. We're going to go, and there's a little bit of uh, shenanigans as the Habs attempted to sign one of my restricted free agents. So we're going to go ahead. We're just going to match the offer, and we're going to bring him back. And it's it wasn't a consequential amount of money, so it is what it is. And we're gonna bring back both Svechnikov and Merkley. And by bring back, I mean bring him for the first time into the organization. Now we're gonna wait a couple of weeks, keeping our boy Lupul in mind because that is um, a restricted free agent. I potentially want to make a play on, because I mean, like I said, top six forward. I mean, he's looking like he's got some potential in him, and he's already creeping up on the mid 80s. I mean, this guy. This guy might be a real player, you know, and, and he doesn't want a whole lot of money. So if we can if we can drop his price, you know, wait a little bit of extra time so that his price drops to the point where we can offer him something that he'll accept, I think we might be able to steal a really good player from the Detroit Red Wings here. So right now we're gonna we're gonna offer him a contract under what he wants. But it's it's probably not going to get accepted. But my thinking is maybe it's just he doesn't want to go back to Detroit. I wouldn't blame him. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to offer him just that. And we're going to see if he accepts it. That would be huge. I think Detroit would match this. They'd be kind of stupid not to. Unless they just literally don't have the camp for it. But we're going to wait and find out here in the couple in the next couple days. Lupul doesn't sign just flat out rejects our offer so that's that's unfortunate but a couple you know just under a week later i figure we we might see a little bit of a price drop we don't really see a price drop so i take a second swing at him i say how about i give him that 2.2 mil but just for one year for one year he wants a lot less money and i figure you know what let's just kick the can down the road let's just get this man and we'll see what we can see when we can see it as far as re-signing him goes in the future. You know, in this season. We've got some guys that are not coming back after this next free agency. So, Lupo might end up taking the, taking their place. And he's going to accept our, or not our qualifying offer, but our offer sheet. 
And the Red Wings don't match it. It costs us a third round pick to get an 83 overall medium elite young player. If you told me that I could guarantee, uh, not a medium elite, I'm sorry, a medium top six forward that's going to be a top six forward with a third round pick, I would take it. I would absolutely take it. So that's what I'm going to do. Fixing the lines, it looks like, unfortunately, for Cappy and Janssen, they're going to start off the season in Stockton because I'm trying to see if Tom Wilson is indeed going to fit with our roster. And we're going to give it a couple games. We're going to see how it works. And, I mean, Kapanen, we could always bring him up if the team needs some more offense and Tom Wilson is just not providing that. Because Wilson, yes, he's a physical player, but he can provide a little bit of offense. We'll see if he can still do it at his age. And if he can, then good. If he can't, we're just going to send him down. We're going to call up Kasperi, Kapanen, Matthews and see if he can add a little bit of offensive spark to the team. I go back, I check the stats. Wilson is not doing jack shit. So that's pretty much uh, after 23 games, you've had enough of a sample size to show me and he hasn't shown me anything. So we're going to go to roster moves. We're going to go send down Tom Wilson. At this point, to be honest, I didn't really have time to look for a trade. So I said, you know what? If he gets claimed, then fuck it. I don't <laughs> I don't really care if somebody claims him off waivers. We're not going to use Tom Wilson again. We're going to bring up Esperi or Kesperi Capitan to the main roster and it's gonna actually turn into a really good endeavor this right here combined with the loophole signing man this is this is probably the two best moves because now we're trying to find captain in some playing time it gives us a plus three on the third line that is freaking huge so we're gonna we're gonna try to get these guys as much playing time as possible we can't we can't really do it ideally, but eventually we might figure it out. So I decided we're going to keep it like this. We're going to wait a couple games, see how it goes. It's so-and-so. We're winning games. We're losing games. You know, we're a physical team it, it, in the regular season. We're not really a President's Trophy kind of team. We're, we're a middle-of-the-road playoff team that just turns it on when it matters. So that's what we're trying to do. Rammer is now the leading scorer. So we'll see if we can fidget with the lines a little bit. You can see Kasperi Kapanen is a point per game out here. So that turned into a really good investment. And Lupul gives us a plus three on that second line. So Tyler Radish, unfortunately, is going to get screwed again. This man, <laughs> this man just continuously gets absolutely screwed by the situations. And obviously, I looked to see if we could put him on the first line, but Lindholm's there. That's right. I put Lindholm on the wing this year and Nuge at center. It just worked better because Nuge's secondary position is left wing, but that's Rammer's spot, and Lindholm's secondary position is right wing, so we slided him there. That just turned into a really good first line. Ideally, we would want Lindholm at center, but you know what? If we have Nuge on the team, then why not? You know what I'm saying? Now... The games are going great, and Lupul is performing, so I figured let's bring him back. Let's offer him a good contract extension, and actually, he wanted a really fair price. Like, I was surprised. That is a very, very good amount of money for, you know, if we consider that he's going to be a top six forward. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to offer him that. I mean, why not? For a, for a number of years, too. Like, we're going to have this Lupul man on the squad for a number of years, you know. We might even consider re-signing him at the end of that term as well. So he's going to become an integral part of the Flames franchise. We basically just stole a top six forward from the Detroit Red Wings. What a blunder that was on their part. Now, Elias Lindholm wants to come back, but he wants to come back at a monstrous amount of money. I was not sure, man, because, I mean, Lindholm, he's been a, he's been a huge part of the Flames organization for the last decade but he, he wanted a lot of money, so we offered him a little bit less. I figured, you know what, maybe a little bit of a hometown discount. We'll see what he wants. Soderstrom, though, he wants a whole lot of money, and to be frank with you, he deserves it. He's been our number one defenseman at 5-on-5, five five power play, PK. He's doing every single thing that we ask of him. He's only an 87, so I didn't really want to go at that 10 mil plateau, but if we could get him at 9.9, .9, you know? Just a happy middle ground be between what I would like to pay him and what he would want to be paid. I feel like that could work. I feel like we could reach some sort of an agreement. That's what negotiations negotiations are. You know, it's to reach that middle ground. Lindholm signs the extension. So does Soderstrom. So we are huge with the extensions. We are going to storm for the rest of the regular season. 
we're going to see if we can make the playoffs again. All right. It's been a great, great year for the Calgary Flames once again. Okay. 44 wins. It's not as though we're tearing a, the freaking rubber off the puck here. But you know what? We're doing just exactly what we want. We have a physical team. I say it every year. If you have a physical team, just make the playoffs. Make the playoffs and figure it out from there. Now, looking at the final stats, of course, Rammer is giving us a great season. Kapanen gave us a fantastic season. Lupul slowed down a little bit since his first few quality games, but, I mean, my goodness. That Kasperi Kapanen signing is going to turn into a really, really good um, endeavor for us. Now... Unfortunately, Vernarski still doesn't show up during the regular season, but he's kind of he's kind of been a playoff goalie for us. So we'll see if he can turn it on here when it matters. Now, first round of the playoffs, it's time to turn it on, boys. Let's see what we got. We got the Colorado Avalanche in the first round. This finna be a breeze, brother. We just swept these motherfuckers. It wasn't even close. Okay, it was just an outright ass kicking. So let's go. Move on to the second round. I mean, that's what I like to see from my playoff team that, you know, what we've bred to be playoff performers. We love that. Vancouver, look at this. We're going to start the season or the series once again. Two W's. I thought this was going to be a breeze again. But no, the Canucks storm back with two wins of their own. And just like that, we are thrusted into a very, very important game five over 80% of teams that win game five when the series is tied go on to win the series so we really need this one we have a three to three game at the end of two we're gonna slow sim to third and see what happens but it looks like nothing's gonna happen both goalies remain perfect it's overtime time and we get a snipe yes sir extension man elias lindholm gets a snipe from the shooters dot and that is gonna be game we have a three to two series lead in the second round it looks like we just might make it to the conference finals again we do we dispatch of the vancouver canucks in six games and here we are taking on the winnipeg jets there's a lot of canadian teams here late in these rounds we love to see it it's gonna end up being once again a pretty close series as we do the same thing. We win the first two, drop the next two. Not a big fan of that. We need to clean that up a little bit if we want to, you know, if we want to keep our Stanley Cup hopes alive. Here comes that all-important game five once again. We take a 2-0 lead. We keep it through 40, and here comes the third. The Jets are going to start taking chances here to get some offense done. It doesn't work. They're overly aggressive. They're taking penalties, and we just make them pay every single time. 4-0, 5-0. That is game, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately for us, they are going to break the shutout right about here on this power play. So that's unfortunate. Fernarski doesn't get his shutty, but you know what? Still a good performance, and guess what? John Ramjaxing again, showing up for the playoffs for us. He shows up for the regular season, shows up for the playoffs. There's no doubt in my mind this guy is going to be one of the greatest of all time. He already is, but like by the time his career is over, ooh, baby, it's going to be a no-doubter. Now, game six, we can once again dispatch our opponents and move on to another Stanley Cup final. After two periods of play, we have that 3-2 lead, and it's looking good. We're just, you know, keeping the shots. Hopefully to the outside is what I'm is what I'm thinking. We're being physical with the Jets, as is our MO. That's just kind of what we do. I think I found a cheat code, man. Build yourself a physical team. Get a really, really good franchise player. And you got it. As we beat the Winnipeg Jets in six games. Look at this. Rammer showing up with another two goals. My goodness. This kid's going off. Okay, I mean, is he a kid anymore? I don't think he's a kid anymore. I think he's like mid-20s at this point. I think he's like 24, 25. Nah, he ain't no kid no more. And here come the Washington Capitals for the Stanley Cup Finals. They kick our ass in the first two games. I was like, oh, no, do not get swept. Do not get swept in the Stanley Cup Finals. We don't. We pull off the reverse of the last two series. We lose the first two. Come back with two consecutive dubs. And we set up another super important game five. We'll see what we can do after two. We have a 2-1 deficit. That's not looking great, but it's okay. We can still make this happen. Oof, now, now it's looking a little less okay. We are down 3-1. to one. We're going to need a goal pronto here if we want to set up some good, some good chances here late in the game to tie it up. We do get that goal. Let's go, Vinny. 
coming in clutch with a goal for the Flames, but unfortunately, that's where the score is going to stay. 3-2, to two, the Washington Capitals take home this one, and we are down 3-2 to two in the series. Here comes Game 6. It's a must-win for the Flames. I'm not sure we've ever been in this situation, but we'll see. We're, we're about to find out what's going to happen. At, at least we're at the Saddle Dome. Okay, we got that home ice for Game 6. We'll see how it goes. One pair down, two pair down. It's one to one. It's a close defensive game. We're a physical team, so I like this. Boom. Early lead in the third period. Let's freaking go. That's what I like to see, Mr. Ram Jagsing. We're gonna get a power play. That power play could have swung the game, but we didn't score on it. We keep the caps in it with our failure. Can we hold them off the score sheet? Though huge kill by the guys to kill that off, but they score immediately after. And we're going to overtime in game six man we do not want to give the capitals a cup here on our own i on our own on our own sheet of ice we don't want to do that okay let's not do that we're gonna be out here and both teams are playing kind of passive okay they don't want to be giving up chances i like them we're standing at the blue line the caps are gonna get a chance here and they hit the post they were about two inches away from winning the stanley cup on that shot and it's going to iron out right after getting right through Vernarski. he got completely beat here comes Lupul back down the ice to Ram Jackson you can't write this shit the GOAT does it again off of a pass from the guy we stole from the Detroit Red Wings and the Flames just like that are gonna force game seven with the blasty jerseys on I mean what kind of magical shit is happening in Calgary? They hit the post off of a off of a series winning shot, a, a cup winning shot. If it goes in, and it doesn't, goes right back down the ice, loophole to Rammer, back of the net. We're going back to Verizon Center. If it's still even called that, is it called Verizon Center still? I think it is. Regardless, we're going back to DC for Game Seven. I swear to God, if we win this Stanley Cup, we are officially unbeatable. Like, it, it, there's just too much magic. You can't contend with the magic of John Ramjagsing and the Calgary Flames. Now, it's a 2-1 deficit after two periods, but I'm still confident. I'm saying, you know what? We've had some clutchness in the past, and we get clutchness again. Fourth liner Tyler Radish gets her going on the power play, but we give it right back, which absolutely sucks. It's 3-2. It's getting late in the third period. Are we done? Are we going to run out of luck? Or is there one more miracle left? We start the end of the third period with a four-on-four -four situation. We look like we're going to get a chance right off the hop. But it's just barely stopped by the Caps defense. And that's going to be huge for them. They're going to take the puck right back down the ice. And their penalty is about to expire, which is going to give them a short power play we desperately need to kill this off they're gonna get a huge chance but two nice saves by Vernarski keep us in it we rifle it all the way down to their zone we need to kill off this penalty desperately to set us up for a chance of tying this game they're gonna get another chance good shooting area Vernarski with another huge save but Ricard Raquel backhands it gives the Caps a two goal lead they would add an empty netter and that is the end of the magical run for the Calgary Flames. We make it once again to the Stanley Cup Finals. I, I, I lost count of how many conference finals we've made in a row. We've built a great team here in Calgary. But unfortunately for us this year, the road's going to stop just a few goals shy of the Stanley Cup. Man, that sucks. You never know when it's going to be your last opportunity at it and you can see rammer really really not feeling that one he he thought he could pull another one out of his ass but he didn't but a bright spot for this season is that man right there mr lupel number 53 we stole him from the detroit red wings flat out i rarely go after rfas but that one was just too juicy to leave alone turns out he fits well with our strategies so let's go man we're gonna have another really really good player added to our top six forward new capitals captain Yevgeny Kuznetsov is going to win the Conn Smythe trophy good for him he also gets to lift the Stanley Cup which is huge for him oh it's Capital One that's right it's not Verizon anymore it's Capital One I just saw it on the Jumbotron 
the first handoff of the Stanley Cup, just to piss me off a little bit more, is going to be to freaking Adam Larson. <laughs> I, I am sad. I am very sad. I don't know if Hannafin is on this team. Quite frankly, I don't care. I feel like uh, that trade was justified, okay? We've got our cups. We just couldn't get this one done. And we got some work to do. Peace.